How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? So today we are going to look over what the point totals of our Red Wings players could look like next season. Now this is assuming all play 82 games. So Dylan Larkin, Tyler Bertuzzi, Jacob Vrana, Maurice Sider, Lucas Raymond, Philip Zadina, Robbie Fabry, Philip Pronick, Michael Rasmussen. It's assuming they all play a full 82 game schedule. So obviously these point totals are going to be different. There could be injury and plus some players missing from the lineup are going to hurt some lines and how well those players on those lines perform. So the first off we have the captain Dylan Larkin. Now he's finally going to have a full season with real top line wingers that are going to be playing hard the full 60 minutes with Jacob Vrana and Tyler Bertuzzi on his wings. And I'm expecting a points jump. Honestly, I'm expecting more than this, but my gut says Dylan Larkin is going to score 25 goals, have 52 assists, and 77 points through 82 games. Now, Tyler Bertuzzi lost most of his season due to injury. And before that, he was 7 points in 9 games played. It looked like he was finally going to have a major breakout season and become a star in Detroit. Much more than he already has become. So heading into this season, there's obviously big expectations and wondering if he's going to be able to keep up that pace that he had before he got injured. For me, I think he's going to be around 31 goals, 44 assists, and 75 points through 82 games, obviously. Bertuzzi has that junkyard style of play that allows him to be pretty much in any spot and make really, really good plays. Not to mention he can put the puck in the back of that pretty often. So I think he's finally going to eclipse 31 goals and be at 75 points, just under a point per game. Now the other winger on the first line, Jacob Vrana. Vrana joined the Red Wings after the trade deadline deal where the Capitals acquired Anthony Mantha from the Detroit Red Wings and the Red Wings acquired Richard Ponick, Jacob Vrana, a first and second round draft pick and he exploded. He went point per game, 11 goals in 11 games, including a four goal game against the Dallas Stars. Now, the biggest thing I want to point out is that he had a lot of goals, much more than he had assist. So I think he's probably going to still keep up with that more goals than assist pace. But do I think he's going to be point per game? No, I think he's going to be a little bit under, but I do think he's going to get better as the season goes on especially coming into the end of the season where the Brebbings may be in competition for a playoff spot. Who knows? I feel like he's going to really show up and he's going to put on some shows, kind of like what he did in Dallas and really for the remainder of the season after the trade deadline. So I think he'll have 34 goals, 33 assists, and 67 points. I honestly had a hard time not giving him more goals. I feel like there's a possibility he may eclipse the 40 goal mark, but that may just be hopeful thinking. So I'm going to finally go with a defenseman. We went over the top forward line. Let's look at our best defenseman of the last couple of years, Philip Hronik. Hronik led the team in points this last season, mostly being assist, only two goals, and they were both empty netters. Most likely, I think he's going to keep up that pace. He's been around half a point per game since entering the NHL. I think he's probably going to keep up that pace maybe a little bit better. So I went with 10 goals, 44 assists, and 54 points. I think he's going to find that scoring touch again next season. Not too crazy, but definitely more than just two or three empty net goals. And then, of course, he's going to have a lot of assists. He's going to have some forwards he can actually pass to, and they can put the puck in the back of the net. The next big one, probably the most exciting one, at least for me, I feel like he's due for a breakout season, and that's going to be the Czech, Philip Sedina. Philip Sedina, he was drafted to be a goal scorer. He was supposed to go third overall in the 2018 NHL draft, and somehow fell down to 6th overall where the Red Wings inevitably selected him. He was selected to be a goal scorer, probably 40 to 50 goals potential when he was drafted. He has yet to reach those expectations, but he is only 21. Now, I feel like this season is due for his breakout season. His rookie season, he was obviously starting to establish himself. He was 19. He was showing the Red Wings he could make plays in the NHL and becoming more confident. This last season, he proved to the Red Wings he is ready to be on the NHL roster. He was proving how defensively responsible he was, and that he can chip in in the offense. This season, he's going to show them what he can really do. He's going to be on that second line, guaranteed, if not the first line. So I think he's going to have 22 goals, 35 assists, and 57 points, which 
are fairly low expectations, especially in the goal department, and I could see him maybe being closer to 25 or 30 if the season goes well. But I definitely feel like Zadina is going to break out and hopefully hit around that point total or more. This player had an injury-ridden season, kind of similar to Tyler Bertuzzi or Dylan Larkin, and that is Robbie Fabry. Robbie Fabry was acquired from the St. Louis Blues in a trade where the St. Louis Blues acquired Jacob De La Rose and the Red Wings acquired Robbie Fabry. Since then, he's obviously become a mainstay in the lineup. He's definitely a second line forward and can produce some pretty good points, but he's a little bit streaky. Now, the thing is, he didn't play a lot of games this season and produced a good amount of goals. His goals per game average put into an 82 game schedule was pretty close to 30 goals on the season. So I think he's actually going to hit that 30 goal mark. There's a possibility he can even hit more, but I don't want to set expectations too high for him. So I think Robbie Fabry will be at 30 goals, 27 assists, and 57 points. So this is my favorite prospect. I know not a lot of people love him, but he is probably going to be on the Red Wings roster for a while. He is big. He is hulking. It is Michael Rasmussen standing at six foot six. Now, he got a lot faster. He's been doing a lot better. It's crazy to think that he went over two points per game in his junior playoffs. And then, of course, they took him up to the NHL because they didn't feel like it would be better for his development to be down in juniors. And then, of course, he didn't produce a lot. He went down to the AHL last season. He had a good amount of injuries that kept him out of the lineup, but he did actually produce a good amount of points in the AHL. So I feel like this season he may sort of have a breakout while also kind of just establishing himself a little bit better in the Red Wings organization and NHL roster. So I predicted him having 18 goals, 27 assists, and 45 points, mostly being power play points. Now the last two I want to go over are going to be rookies if they do make their way onto the Red Wings roster. Now, one of these prospects I don't think is going to be on the roster for a full 82-game schedule. And the other one I'm hoping does play a full 82-game schedule. You never know, he could miss a couple games due to injury. So, the first one is going to be probably the headliner of the opening night roster, Royce Sider. Everyone is more than excited for him to finally make his NHL debut. He was drafted 6th overall in the 2019 draft and was considered a reach there. He dominated the SHL last season. I think he's going to be at 8 goals, 37 assists, and 45 points. There is a possibility he does better, but I feel like the biggest thing for his rookie season is that he is going to be super defensively responsible. I think he'll have one of the best plus minuses on the team, especially for defensemen playing a majority of the game. Now, the last one, this is very unlikely, especially because I don't think he'll play a full 82-game schedule, is going to be Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond, as we know, signed his entry-level contract with the Red Wings back in the spring. He made his way over to Michigan last week and is going to be in development camp, training camp, and on the preseason roster. The question is, does he make the team right now, or does he still need more development in the AHL? The consistent answer is yes, he needs more development, but he is going to make his way to the NHL roster, whether it's a 9-game call-up or the full 82-game schedule. In the case that he does play a full 82 game schedule, I think Raymond's going to have 16 goals, 32 assists, and 48 points. I think majority of it is going to be assists, especially because he's not going to have that full NHL player body that could move people around enough that he could score lots of goals. But I think his playmaking mindset is going to give him abilities to make a lot of assists. So 32 assists, that's pretty good for a rookie season. What do you guys think? How many points is Moritz Sider or Lucas Raymond going to get if they play a full 82 game schedule? Let us know down below. Red Wing Nation was designed to be a community of Red Wings fans that could come together and talk about all things Red Wings. If you like this video, go ahead and drop a like. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, don't be afraid to subscribe. That way you get notified when we upload a video. Until next time, lights out in the red light district.